USA, USA, USA. So I just got back and one of the big Democrats, I won't tell you who because I don't like to even mention their name, but like one of the biggest said, you better be careful with Trump. There are right now 16 people sitting home watching television and you better be careful what you wish for because this is going to be brutal. And we're going to win, folks. We're going to win. I can tell you. Look at this crowd. We're going to win. And a poll just came out, a poll just came out, a, a great poll, that we're leading Hillary Clinton. That's already happening. Already happened. The Rasmussen poll. So, you know, this wasn't supposed to happen today. After we won, I figured, well, maybe I'll stay home and take it a little bit easy. You know, who would have thought this? Trump wins before Clinton. You know why? She can't put the deal away. We can. We know how to close the deal. She can't put it away. She cannot put the deal away. You know, she makes that one speech a week. She'll get up, reads the teleprompter. She goes, north and south, east and west. We all love what's happening to our country. But we don't love what's happening to our country. We don't love it. So... But it wasn't supposed to happen because after we won, which was a little unexpected to do it that quickly, but we had such great, incredible victories, those last victories, New York landslide, won everything. Landslide. And that's with three candidates, almost 62%, but that's... They'll only show if we have a protester, so I hope we have a couple of protesters today. You know, Hillary, Crooked Hillary yesterday had a protester, and what she did is she cut her speech short. She cut it short. It was from 11 to 13 minutes, depending on who's doing the counting. How would you like to be? Well, here's the thing. You stood in line. We had people standing in line today for eight hours, always, always. So they don't have that problem. They just walk up whatever the time is and they go in and they have 250 people and we have close to 10,000 people today. So it's great. So what I was going to do, and, and I have to thank, I'll tell you what, Brian, Senator Brian Denzel is great. And Don Benton, Big Don, they did an incredible job. And what I was gonna do is say, look, I'll take it easy. But I asked one question. I said, so in West Virginia, where I was going to go first, that was the first stop, we would have had, I think we would have gotten 95% of the vote. In fact, the, the miners endorsed Donald Trump. The miners endorsed him. And gave me an award. You know, as opposed to Hillary, that she wants to have all miners essentially fired. I don't think she's going to do well in West Virginia in November. And then she went to apologize you know, those apologies don't work because they know how you really feel, right? So I said, so let me ask you, so West Virginia, should I go there? They said, well, it has been set up, Mr. Trump. You mean people are getting ready? Yes, I'll go. They said, but you don't have to, we can cancel it. I said, no, you don't understand, I'll go. Then I said, what about Oregon? We had an unbelievable thing. And I said, they said, Oregon's been set up. I said, really, it's been set up, done, people. I said, I'll go. I said, what about Nebraska, where you have a great governor, Pete Ricketts, a great guy. I really like him. His family, I don't know about, but we'll find out. I think I might like the family, too. I'll probably like the family, too. But Governor Ricketts, a great governor, great guy. He introduced me. I said, what about Nebraska? Well, that one's been set up also. Have to go. 
They said, but you don't have to sit, have to go. And then we got out here, the state of Washington, the state of Washington. And I said, what about, what about Washington? And they said, well, over there you have two. I said, oh, don't tell me that. I said, have they been set up? Yeah, they've been set up. So I said, I'm going to Washington, folks. I'm going to Washington. But you have to promise me something. On May 24th, May 24th, you got to go out and vote. And you got to sign the back of those envelopes. You got to put the little thing. If you don't sign, your vote's not going to count. Because right now, we just about surpassed every presidential nominee, every presidential candidate in the history of the Republican primaries. We have more votes. Millions and millions of votes. And you know, they went through the whole nation. We haven't, we still have quite a few left, all right? So we won it a little bit early. But we want to win by a big mandate. We want to win by a big, big number. So I really appreciate you being here today, especially to have, and look, they're pouring in still. I really appreciate you being here today, but I guarantee I'll be back numerous times because we are going to take the state of Washington. We are. We're going to take it. We're going to bring our jobs back. I'm looking at your numbers. Not good. Look at this. Spokane region has lost nearly one third of its manufacturing jobs. I do this. These are statisticians. The world's most boring job. How would you like to be a statistician? But you know what? The man that does it, he loves it. He thinks it's great. Lost one third of its manufacturing jobs since Bill Clinton successfully lobbied to put China in the World Trade Organization. Not a good move. Not a good move. The labor force in Spokane, the labor force is 9,000 people smaller today than it was when Obama took office in 2009. Not good. Not good. The number of timber jobs, I love timber. Few people use more timber than Donald Trump. That I can tell you. Few people. The number of timber jobs in the state of Washington has been cut in half since 1990. Come on, fellas, let's get with it. What's wrong with you? No, I know what's wrong. I mean, look, everyone's taking it away from us, but we're bringing it back. You know, I always say, it's amazing the crowds I get, because we always have crowds like this. And, and we have 35,000, we had 45,000. We have a very great musician. A gr <laughs> We, you know, a writer said to me, make America great again is not a very positive message. I said, you have to understand, that's the most positive message. That's the most positive message. Because right now our country is doing poorly. We're losing our jobs. We're losing manufacturing. We're losing our money. I go around, I look at these statistics. They are a disaster, okay? They're a disaster. All over the country, they're a disaster. Is this guy on our side or not? Let me see. Huh? You on our side? Are you on our side? Okay, put your hand down then, will you? Guy's got his hand up and everybody's pointing. I think he's lying. Is he lying when he says yes? Are you on our side? Huh? Out. Out. Get out of here. All right. He's, I think he's a Bernie person. Bernie, Bernie's going down because, hey, look, look. It is a crooked system. It is a crooked system. And I'm not a fan of Bernie, but he's a member of a crooked system. All right, let's go. You can let him stay there for a little longer. I think he's got some problems. Got some little problems here. All right, get him out. Get him out. Get out. Out. Oh, you know the good news? The cameras have now pointed. They can see the crowd. We love it. I love protesters. Don't we have a protester someplace like in the back? Those cameras, they twist like pretzels. 
Otherwise, they just stay in my face. My wife said, was the crowd large today? I said, you didn't see it? No, they never take it off your face. Oh, boy. Okay. Illegal immigration cost Washington State $2.7 billion a year. Illegal We will build a wall, folks. We are going to do it right. We are going to do it right. We're going to build a wall. Wow. You've received a large influx of refugees and Syrian refugees. You have no idea where they come from, folks. Lots of luck. Hey, folks, lots of luck. Lots of luck. Good luck. Who the hell knows? They have no paperwork. They have no documentation. They have no anything. And you know what? We should take care of them. I'll get the Gulf states that have so much money, you wouldn't believe it. I'm good at getting people to put up money. Believe me, they'll put up money. And we build safe zones in Syria. We don't want them here. We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. And take a look at what's happening in Europe. It's a mess. Look at what's happening in Germany. Look at what's happening all over Europe. It's a mess. And we don't need it. Our country has enough problems right now, okay? Hate to say it. And we want to help, and we want to do something. Although I will say, when you look at that migration, you see so many young, strong men. Does anyone notice that? Am I the only one? Young, strong men. And you almost say, like, why aren't they back fighting? But you don't see that many women and children, right? So you're saying, what are we doing? Who are the people coming over and why don't they have documentation? We can't be the stupid country anymore, folks. We can't be the stupid country anymore. All right. The Clintons gave us NAFTA, right? They gave us NAFTA. Probably the worst piece of legislation having to do with business and economic development ever signed in the history of our country. It has wiped out New England. It's wiped out New York State. It's wiped out Pennsylvania. And I've got to know these places so well because we've had these massive victories. And I go up to Pennsylvania, Maryland, Connecticut, New York. I, I go all over. And I see empty factory after empty factory. You could buy them for $2. And, and how sad is it? And they move to Mexico. And China takes our jobs. And believe me, folks, it's going to change so fast. It's going to be like, a, it's going to change so fast, it's so easy. We're not going to let it happen. And I'll tell you how it's going to change. I'll tell you how it's going to change. But I have to do a couple of things because I happen to really... I happen to love a certain guy in the room. I love certain people, even guys. This is a guy who's been great. I have to do it. But before May 24th, you got to do it because we're sending a signal, okay? This is a movement. This isn't like normal. Bill O'Reilly said on his show, it's the single greatest political event that he's seen in his lifetime. What's happened with Trump? And he doesn't want to say that. And other people have said the same thing, many people, and it's, it's a movement. So you have to vote. And the nice part, all you have to do, you don't even have to vote. You just have to send back the envelope, right? So they're going to be arriving in your beautiful homes today. And if you will, do the check, do the signature, do whatever you have to do. Send them back. Let's have a really big victory here to keep it going, okay? May 24th. So I want to thank Steve Etman. That was a good athlete. Where's Steve? Where the hell is Steve? Steve, man, were you good. You used to kill our team, Steve. That's no good. Look at the size of this guy. Thank you, Steve, very much. I appreciate it. Great, great guy. Great reputation, too. I have to talk about Coach Leach, right? Should I talk about him? Do we like Coach Leach? So I watched, I watched 60 Minutes. This is quite a while ago. And he was a Texas Tech. And he was beating everybody, right? He was beating everybody. What do I know? I don't have enough time to watch this stuff closely, but I like champions. Hey, Bobby Knight in Indiana endorsed me. I don't know how many points it meant, but I won Indiana in a big, fat landslide. And I love Bobby Knight. So I read the New York Times, a cover story on the New York Times magazine. I don't think they've ever had a football coach ever in the history of the magazine on the cover of the two, you know, this elite New York Times magazine. 
and I see this guy, and it's Mike Leach. I didn't know him. I didn't know him. I just was amazed that they put a football coach. But he was having this incredible season, beating everybody, and he's on the cover of the magazine. And I look inside, there's a big statement. Who do you most like? Who do you most admire? It's Donald Trump. So immediately, I love this guy, right? No, I love him. I love him. Then I see him, he's at Texas Tech, and he, where's Coach Leach? Where the hell is he? Coach Leach! You don't mind if I talk about our relationship, right? He's a great coach, great guy too, great family. So, so, and I did this with Bobby Knight, and we also had Lou Holtz. We had some tremendous people endorse us, but Coach Leach was interesting, because I didn't know him at all. Then he's on 60 Minutes. They do a profile. Who the hell ever saw a profile on 60 Minutes of a coach from Texas Tech? And what happens, what happens is the coach is beating everybody, beating everybody, and he's on the cover. And I see the New York Times, then I see 60 Minutes, I said, man, this guy must be a hell of a coach, right? Boy, you're lucky to have him, okay. And I see a picture of myself, he's on 60 Minutes, and I'm looking and I'm watching, falling asleep, okay, and I'm watching, and I see a picture of me on his desk. Don't worry, there was a picture of his wife also, who's great. But there's a picture of me on his desk. I said, this guy really likes me. The Times, I mean, this guy, I don't know who the hell he is, but he really likes me. So I actually put in a call to him and I became sort of phone friends. I said, coach, good luck. You know, anybody, my attitude, when people like me, I like them. Even Putin, you know, Putin, they want me to disavow Putin. Putin of Russia, he said, Trump is a genius. He'll be the next leader. Don't worry. He's not getting it, but you know, they wanted me to disavow the statement. He said, Trump is a genius. He'll be the next leader of the United States. And these characters, no, no. These characters that I was debating, they wanted me to disavow that statement. I said, I'll never disavow that statement. He's not gonna get anything from it, but we'll see. And by the way, wouldn't it be nice if we actually got along with Russia? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be nice? You know, so anyway, so I'm, I'm looking at this thing and then all of a sudden he wins again, he wins again. And then he has this massive game against, I think it was Texas, right? Texas, right? And Texas is this incredible team that's just beating everybody. The last great year that they had. And here's Coach Leach with Texas Tech. And who wins? And I took more heat by backing your team. I'm saying Coach Leach is going to win. I didn't even know. But boy, did I, I'll tell you, that Texas team was pretty popular, coach. I took a lot of heat. But at least I'm back in the Texas team. So what happens? A great catch, right? And he ends up winning the game. And everyone said Trump is a genius. Isn't that great? I was the only one that said, I was the only one that said Texas Tech is going to win. And honestly, I don't think they treated him great. Okay, I'll be honest. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Even if he, does, even if he says no. I don't think they treated him great. He's this great coach. He's a genius an offensive genius, they didn't treat him great. And he wanted to go to a particular school. He said, Mr. Trump, if I ever get to be coach of that school, I'll never lose a game because that school gets the best athletes. I don't want to say what school because the person that heads it, I know. I said, coach, don't worry about it. I know the person, no problem. I call the person and they had such respect for me that they didn't hire him, they hired somebody else, <laughs> right? And you know what happened? That football program went to hell. It went to hell. I don't even talk to that person anymore because I said, what the, what? I'm giving a good thing. And it was a little embarrassing, coach, don't worry about it. I got you covered, coach, you're all set. And it's true. And if he would have gone to that school, you know what I'm talking about. The guy maybe never would have lost a game because they get the best athletes. It's like in Texas, Texas seems to get these great athletes, right? So he ends up coming out here to the Cougars, right? Washington State Cougars. Oh, did you get... I hope they take good care of him because you're doing great. He's a real popular guy out here. But I have to tell you, he's a hell of a coach and I haven't seen him in a long time. And then today I heard he was introducing me and I was very honored by it. But I'll tell you, you've got yourself a great coach. And coach, how's the football team going to be this year? Good? He says good. That means good. Your quarterback is good? Huh? Okay, with him, you don't even need a good quarterback. He knows what to do. So anyway, congratulations. And Coach, thank you for introducing. That's really nice. Coach Leach, everybody. So, so we have a lot of work to do. We've, it's been an amazing period because 
On June 16th, I announced I was going to run. And the Bobby Knight coaching story is interesting because he called me before I announced and he said, and I don't know him, but now I know him. But Bobby Knight said, Mr. Trump, you got to run. You got to run. Yeah, he's a tough cookie. Would you say Bobby slightly tough? Okay, slightly, just slightly. You know, the chair goes across, it's bang, you know, it's a little old school. That's okay. That's what we need. We need a little old school, folks. We need a little old school. He's a rough guy. No, but he's rough, but he's smart and he knows how to win. That's what we need. Not just rough and not just smart. You need the whole thing. You can't be rough and not smart. You can't be smart and not a leader and tough, but he knows how to win. So he calls me up because, you know, I analyze talent and you'll be an unbelievable president. You're what we need. Not these clowns, the clowns. I remember he used the name, the clowns. I said, coach, I'll tell you what, I haven't made a decision yet. This was three months before the June 16th. I said, I haven't made a decision yet, coach, but I'll call you and I appreciate, give me your number, coach. So I took his number, I put it down at the bottom of a big pile of stuff and that was it. Now I start winning and I go out. And I saw this morning when I announced these pundits who don't have the brains they were born with, by the way, Charles Krauthammer, he will not run. Donald Trump will not run. And if he does, he is running against the finest field of talent in the history of the Republican Party. Bing, 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 bing. 16 of the most talented politicians ever to run, ever to run. And if Donald Trump, who I don't know, but if Donald Trump runs, he will have no chance. This is the most talented field ever assembled by the Republican Party. In fact, he almost talked me out of it. I watched that and I was thinking about running. And I watched Charles Krauthammer say, most talented field of people in the history of the Republican And I said to my wife, this is gonna be tough, right? I didn't know that he didn't know what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> Don't forget, Krauthammer is the one, we've got to go to Iraq and we've got to fight, fight for years, fight, fight. We should have never gone to Iraq. One of the worst decisions ever made. Okay, so what happens, what happens is I say, look, I don't care because I see what's happening. You have this guy, Secretary Kerry, doesn't know what he's doing, makes the worst deal in, in history for this country. One of, makes one of the worst deals. We had a couple. One of the worst things ever to happen to our country going to Iraq and one of the worst deals we ever made was the Iran deal. Give them $150 billion, we get nothing. We don't even get our prisoners back until we give them the money. I mean, think of it, it's like a ransom for $150 billion. Those deals aren't gonna happen with me, folks, okay? I believe me, believe me. So, so, I listened to these guys talking about how strong the field of Republicans is. Jeb Bush had raised 168 million in a super PAC, right? Other guys had raised, and I'm self-funding. I self-fund, so I'm self-funding. So what happens is I decide, you know what? I can't take it. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out, and we're gonna run, and we're gonna make this country so great again. It's got such unbelievable potential. So I go out and I announce, right? And now I get to know the people. And oh, by the way, some of them are very talented. Do you notice the way how much nicer I am right now? When you win, everybody's talented, right? Except Jeb Bush, frankly, he's got no talent because he says bad things about me. You know, he signed, he signed a pledge. They all wanted me to sign. They thought I'd run independent. They all wanted me to sign a pledge. I said, I'll sign a pledge. A pledge means something. Jeb Bush, very low energy individual, signed a pledge. While he was signing it, he fell asleep. So maybe that's his excuse. No, no. The only reason I speak badly about him is he speaks badly about me. Like, I'll give you an example. Rick Perry has said great things about me. He said, um, he endorsed me. Most of them have endorsed me. But Jeb Bush, no. And Lindsey Graham, this is a lightweight like I have never seen. This guy. He runs. He was at six, right? He was at six. He runs every week, he's down five, four, three percent, right? And ultimately, because of me, he was forced out. And when, he, when we went to South Carolina, he thought he'd have power in South Carolina. 
My son, Baron, who's 10 years old, had far more power than he did. So he was like at 1%. I was at, I think, 48%. And I said, this guy's this, uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Here's what happened. He got wiped out. Now he goes and endorses another guy. He's out. He makes a fool out of himself. Poorly represents the people of South Carolina. But here's the problem in politics. The people have a short memory. Most people forget that he was even in the race. So he was, we knocked him out, you remember. So now he goes on television, Donald Trump doesn't have the temperament. I have the best temperament of all. I'm the one that didn't want to go into the Iraq war, okay? And by the way, somebody said Donald Trump, his tone is tough. Tone, my tone. Hillary, crooked Hillary said his tone, his tone. They're chopping off heads in the Middle East. They're drowning people in steel cages in the Middle East. And they're worried about my tone. We need a tough tone, folks. We need a tough tone. Believe me. We need a tough tone. We better have a tough tone. And we, get, we better get tough fast. Vigilant, tough, smart. Build up our military. We better do it fast. So anyway, so this total lightweight, I've never seen a guy do more television. He's constantly on television. Lindsey Graham a total dope, and he's constantly on television. No, no, knocking me, always not. I said, wait a minute. Now, he signed a pledge, and the pledge says, we will guarantee you're gonna endorse everything else. I signed it. So Jeb Bush is not an honorable person. Lindsey Graham is not an honorable person. Because when you sign a pledge, that's supposed to mean something, right? It didn't mean anything. But the good news is most everybody has endorsed me, other than Paul Ryan. I don't know what went wrong there, Paul Ryan. But we'll see. And here's the thing, folks. Look, look, we've brought millions of people into this party. It's the highest vote the party has ever gotten. I'm the highest individual in history. Millions and millions of people. In fact, it's the biggest story in politics today, worldwide. We're on the cover of Time magazine so much. I've been on like four times in a fairly short period of time. I've been on twice in my whole life. And now I'm on like, if I'm not on, I say, am I on the cover of Time this week? I'm on like all the time. But it's not me that's on, it's you that's on. I'm the messenger. I'm representing you people and we're doing a hell of a job, okay? We're doing a hell of a job. We're all on the cover of Time magazine. We're all on the cover of time. So here's the story. Here's the story. So we're going to go out and we're going to do great. I think Paul Ryan will be fine. And if he's not, that's okay. You know, a couple of people said it really from Trump's standpoint. I said the only thing that matters to me is all of these millions of people that have signed up. That's what matters to me. And you know, we got here through strength. We didn't get here through weakness. We want strong borders, right? We want a strong military. We have to have a strong military. And that doesn't mean we have to use our military. The stronger we make it, the less we're going to have to use it. When General... I'll tell you what. It's the single cheapest investment we can make is our strong military. When General Ordiano, a nice guy, about a year ago, he was leaving. And he was being interviewed. And by the way, I don't want my generals on television being interviewed. I don't want it. I don't want it. Let them be generals. Do you think General George Patton was interviewed? Yes. We're going to strike the enemy from the front. And then two and a half days later, we're going to strike them back here. And then on May 29th, we're going to drop some bombs. In the meantime, the enemy turns out to be 10 times tougher than we thought because they know our plan. We have to be unpredictable, folks. We have to be unpredictable. Oh, it's so sad. I can just imagine guys like General George Patton, General MacArthur, Gen you know, these great generals that we've had over the years. They're spinning in their grave. You know, a little while ago, President Obama announced that he's sending 50 men to Iraq. And he's sending 200 men. And he gets up, does a news conference. We're sending 50 men to Iraq, Syria. Now, guess what? First of all, the number's so small, it's like only 50. But these are really elite people. Here's the problem. When you do that, they have a target on their back, right? They have a target on their back. And those people are being hunted right now. So keep your mouth shut. Send them if you want to send them. But just keep your mouth shut. You know, don't talk. Don't talk. 
Politicians, they're all talk, no action. I guarantee you Bobby Knight would not be talking about it. Coach Leach would not be talking about it. They get the job done, folks. They get the job done. So here's what we do. So we are going, we are going to change things so rapidly. We have big, big, we have a ways to go. You have Hillary, who's taken $90 million. Now think of this. She's taken, and I think, I would imagine things will be okay with Paul Ryan. We'll see. I'm meeting him on Thursday. We're going to see what happens. He wants to meet. We're going to see what happens. If he wants to meet, I'll meet. But the important thing is you folks, okay? And he'll understand that. And he does understand that. And I would bet if he had that decision to do again, he would have done it the simple way. I endorse Trump, okay? Do you agree with that? Well, it's only one of my volunteers saying that, but that's okay. My volunteer is a smart cookie, right? But... We're going to do things that are going to be incredible in this country. Hillary, though, took 90 million. You know, she's got money from all these special interests all over the place. And she's going to win because the system's so rigged. Even though Bernie wins, 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 got no superdelegates. You know, the Republican system is rigged, but I did it by overwhelming odds. Like, you know, just I won by so much. You know, it's like the prize fighters when they knock somebody out. I won by so much that there was nothing they could do. The bosses couldn't do anything. So we won big league, big league. I mean, those last eight states have been incredible. Indiana, why? I mean, that was going to be the firewall, Indiana. They were going to beat me and turn me back, coach, in Indiana. But it didn't quite work out that way. We won Indiana in a landslide. We won with women. I love, we won with women. We won with men. The men I don't care about, but we won with women in a landslide. But we won with evangelicals. We won with young. We won with old. We won with highly educated. We won with the military. We won with the vets. We won with everybody. This was going to be the firewall. So that's the story. So what happened is now we're... The nice part is now we're focusing on crooked Hillary Clinton. And, and I think we're going to do very well. But here's the thing. She's going to have $2 billion. $2 billion. They've already taken $90 million worth of ads. And they're ads women-oriented. You know, she's playing the women's card. By the way, if she didn't play the women's card, she would have no chance. I mean zero of winning. She's playing the women's card. She's going, did you hear that uh, Donald Trump raised his voice while speaking to a woman? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, all of the men, we're petrified to speak to women anymore. We may raise our voice. You know what? The women get it better than we do, folks. All right? They get it better than we do. If she didn't play that card, she has nothing. So here's what happens. And this is sort of amazing to me. So they go out. They go out, and I looked at $90 million, right? And she's going to play like the women card. And Megan Kelly, nice woman, she came up to my office. She came to me. She called me, and I respect her for doing it. I have to, I'm not saying this in any way. I respect her for doing it. I said nothing wrong to her. They would say, what he said to Megan? I didn't say anything. Remember what I said, the statement? Blood coming out of her eyes. And blood coming out of, oh, whatever. And I wasn't referring... Only these dirty-minded people back here. I was talking about ears, nose, but you know what? I wanted to get on with the conversation because I think I was talking economic development. I didn't want to waste any more time. Someone said, they said, did you hear what Donald Trump said? I didn't say anything. These are bad people. They make a big deal out of it, just so you understand. So here's the story. So they're taking, and then they're critical because I speak about Rosie O'Donnell. Who the hell wouldn't speak badly about Rosie O'Donnell? She's terrible. She's terrible. And then if I did like a Howard Stern show from 10 years ago, you have to understand, folks, until a year ago, I was never going to be a politician. The last thing in the world I wanted to be doing is this. So if I go on Howard Stern show, we have fun. And I've been with politicians, and I've seen politicians on the air saying, not about me, about other people, that was horrible what that man said about women, or that was horrible what that man said about Hispanics or African-American. And I see these people. But I see one guy the other day saying how bad somebody said, it's like nothing, 
how bad it was about women, right? He said, that was a horrible thing. I've been with this guy. The way he talks about women is so bad. It's so, in fact, I think, should I report him, women? Should I report him? I should report him. But anyway, so they act like, oh, look, folks, here's the story. There is nobody that was worse, nobody, than Bill Clinton with women, okay? Nobody. Now, in the history of politics, in the history of politics, Hillary Clinton's husband abused women more than any man that we know of in the history of politics, right? Now, she's going to buy $90 million worth of ads about Donald Trump, right? $90 million, And that's only the first go. They've got $2 billion. They're going to have $2 billion to spend. They're going to spend $90 million on bad ads about me having to do with women. There is nobody that respects women more than I do, I will tell you right now. And every one of these last contests, I'm winning with women in landslides. My daughter, Ivanka, has anyone ever heard of Ivanka? Says, I don't get it, Dad. You, you respect and treat women better than any man I know. My daughter, she doesn't even understand it. But it's politics, folks. But here's the thing. Two can play that game. So they're, they're taking $90 million worth of phony ads, and some of this was said for entertainment purse, purse. You know, one of them was said, like, on The Apprentice, right? Brandy. And they went, they called Brandy. What do you think? Oh, I don't even remember it. That's what, Brandy. You remember Brandy from The They called Brandy, who's a terrific person. What do you think? I don't re even remember that. No, I don't think, I think it's fine. It's great. What's the big deal? They make it sound, oh, it's a, look, folks, we're living in the real world. This political correctness is killing our country. Okay, it's killing our country. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, when Rosie, you played guilt, who the hell would not, who can, how can you say good about Rosie O'Donnell? She's a disaster, okay? So here's the story. Just remember, she's going to do it. I'm going to play the same game, but I don't have to spend 90 million on ads. She's married to a man who was the worst abuser of women in the history of politics. She's married to a man who hurt many women. And Hillary, if you look and see you study, Hillary hurt many women, the women that he abused. She's married to a man who got impeached for lying. He was impeached and he had to go through a whole big process and it wasn't easy. He was impeached for lying about ha what happened with a woman. And she's gonna take ads about little Donald Trump? I don't know, I don't think so, okay? I don't think so. And Hillary was an enabler, and she treated these women horribly. Just remember this. And some of those women were destroyed, not by him, but by the way that Hillary Clinton treated them after everything went down. So just remember that, folks. So just remember that when you're watching these phony ads put out by Hillary Clinton. Just, re just remember, when you're watching these phony paid for by Wall Street ads, put out by Hillary Clinton about Donald Trump. And just remember I said it, there is nobody that has more respect for women than me. There is nobody, or certainly very few, that have promoted women within my big company than I have, okay? I have women, frankly, I shouldn't say this because the men are gonna get angry, but I have women that make more money than men doing a comparable job. Men, am I okay saying that? And they're fantastic. And you know what I find with women? They want to see strength. They want strength on the borders. They want a strong military. They don't want people walking all over our country. They want to see Common Core ended and they want education to be brought locally. And she doesn't want to do that. She wants to get rid of all the miners. She wants to fire the miners. She wants to keep wages low. We're going to have wages that are going to be great. We're going to have wages that are going to go up because we're going to have so many businesses coming back into this country. We're going to bring our businesses back. If you look at carrier air conditioner, one of the reasons I won Indiana in a landslide, aside from Bobby Knight with that great endorsement, that was a great endorsement. 
is because I talked about Carrier, but I wasn't talking about Carrier for two days. I've been talking about it for four months, ever since I saw it. And it didn't matter that it was Indiana, it just happened to be that it was an important, they left Indianapolis, they're going to Mexico. And I said, can't do that, can't do it. We're losing all our companies. We're losing our companies, folks. Our companies, look at your numbers. I mean, you have numbers, but you're down 50%, you're down four, 42%, you're down 9,000 people smaller today. The labor force here is down 9,000 people smaller today than it was in 2009. That's not even a long time ago. I mean, give me a break. We're losing our businesses. Other companies are taking our businesses like, like they're candy from a baby. It's not gonna happen. And just quickly, and I'm sure you've heard it, what I, whether it's Ford, they're building a two and a half billion dollar plant in Mexico, closing plants all over Michigan and other places. They're building this massive plant in Mexico. They just announced that now they're gonna build even more because you know what happened when they announced two years ago that they're building this plant, two years ago. Nobody went to see them. Nobody said, what the hell are you doing? And nobody said, don't ever do it again. They didn't, do, nobody talked to them. I'm the only one that brings it up all the time. That's why I, you know, I won Michigan, right? I won Michigan, I won Illinois, I won all these states. The reason I win them is I'm the one that understands what's happening. I'm endorsed by Carl Icahn. I'm endorsed by the great business leaders because they know I know what the hell I'm doing. These politicians, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. So you have these dummies, you know, like, they like to consider themselves, they say the elite, the elite. I'm not elite, <laughs> really, I'm not elite. I went to a better school than they did. I'm smarter than they are. I'm not elite. You know, they say the elite, they don't like because they want to see free trade. I want free trade too. See, I'm a free trader, but you can't have free trade when you have stupid people doing the negotiation, okay? You can't, you can't because we are being beaten on every front and you can't do it. We owe, I, I'll tell you what, trade deficit with China, $505 billion a year. Who makes a deal like that? And then they say, oh, we're gonna end up with a trade war. Trade war? When you're losing 505 billion, maybe that's a damn good thing, have a trade war. I mean, think of it, Mexico, $58 billion a year. We have a. And that doesn't include all the drugs that are pouring in. That's exclusive of the drugs. Oh, we're building the wall. Don't even think about it. The wall's getting built 100%. The wall is getting built. The wall is getting built and it's gonna be very high and very beautiful. It's gonna be a high wall and a beautiful wall. All right, are you ready? Who's gonna pay for the wall? <laughs> Boy. I've never heard anybody say, hey, let me think about that one. It's like, by the way, 100%. And think of it this way. So we have a trade deficit with Mexico of 58 billion. You know, when I had people standing behind me, meaning the debates, right? I never debated before. That was the one thing I didn't know. How would I debate? According to the polls, Drudge, according to Time Magazine, all of the polls, all of the polls, Every single poll for every single debate that I participated had me number one in the debates. Is that good? I never did. I look so forward to debating this crooked, crooked politician. I look so forward. Whose husband signed, whose husband signed NAFTA, which was the worst trade bill ever. Okay, ever. And by the way, now they want another one. Trans-Pacific Partnership. You better be against it, folks, because I understand it. It's 6,000 pages. I guarantee you that nobody from our side has read it. And everybody over there, they know every single comma, every single sentence and paragraph. And just like Obamacare, this bill was so massive, it turned out that it was a fraud. Remember the guy that did the bill? And he said how he buffaloed everybody. And it, well, Obamacare is crashing. You know, in 17... Isn't it just my luck? I become president, and before I practically take office, Obamacare, look, he's not as stupid as you think, folks. Remember this. He didn't put it, no. He could have had it earlier. He could have had it crash during his term. All of the costs come, and all of the big numbers come in 17. 
And it's going to be a disaster for our country. A disaster. But here's the problem. And here's the good news. We're going to repeal it and replace it before that ever happens. All right? It's a disaster. Your rates are going up 25, 35, 45 percent. So we're going to get rid of TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. And you know, they don't cover the most important element, monetary manipulation. They devalue their currency and they're killing our companies because our companies can't compete when they devalue. That's how China beats us. We have unbelievable manufacturers. Mostly, I mean, half of them are gone now. They're gone. But we don't even discuss the valuation and devaluation of their currencies in the bill. Nobody wants to put it in because they're all controlled by their super PACs, by their donors. They're all controlled by these companies. And nobody wants to put the single biggest threat that they have is the devaluation threat of their money, of their financing. Nobody wants to discuss it. And it's the single biggest threat, monetary devaluation. That's how they kill us. And it's not even in the document. We've got to stop it. Because NAFTA was a disaster. Remember this. NAFTA was a disaster. This is going to be worse. This is going to be worse, especially for a place like this. This is going to be worse. So we will stop it. We will stop it. Let me just finish off. So Carrier. What I do, and I want to do it myself, I'll have a lot of smart people because everybody smart wants to work. We're not going to have political hacks negotiating with China anymore. We're going to have our smartest people and our best business people, and we have the best in the world, all right? We have the best in the world. So here's what we're going to do. So I insist. You know, my wife always says, you shouldn't be calling carrier. You should be presidential. You know what? Don't let me be. I love Melania, too. Don't let me be too presidential, folks, because you look at what our presidents do. They take it nice and easy. They fly to Hawaii to play golf for a few weeks in a big jet. They then come back in an old 747 spewing. And then they talk about the carbon footprint is being very badly hurt. He just left. He just flew to Hawaii to play golf. He's talking about the carbon footprint. Phony politicians, folks, phony politicians. So here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Don't worry. He's a nice guy. That guy's on our side. I always say enemy or foe, foe or friend. Is he a friend? He's a friend. He's, he's a loud friend, but that's okay. He's a loud friend, but we love our loud friends. Folks, we are going to start winning again. We lose in every way. We lose in every way. With Carrier as an example, I'm going to say, here's a story. You leave Indiana, and I'm going to charge you 35% tax for every single air conditioning unit that you make and sell across a now very strong border. 100%. And here's what's going to happen. They're going to call the lobbyists. They're going to call their friends and the donors and the owners of the company, public company. And they're going to call everybody, and they're going to call me. I won't take their calls because, you know, they didn't, they didn't give me anything, okay? And they're going to call back the following day, and they're going to say, Mr. President, we're going to stay in Indiana. And we're going to say, and that's just an, that's just an example. Now, if they've already left, same thing, sorry. And either they're moving back, or we're going to make a lot of money. We're going to make a lot of money. We're going to make a lot of money. They let go of 1,400 good people. So, and I don't mind if they move, if they move to the state of Washington, I think that's great. That's competition, okay? They can move anywhere they want. But when they start leaving our country and thinking they're going to make product and they're going to send it to us and we have no tax. In Nebraska yesterday, Governor Ricketts was terrific. I said, let me ask you, how do you do with Japan? He said, well, it's tough because they charge us a tariff for meat, for beef, of big beef area. They charge us a tariff. I didn't know this. 38%. So they send the cars in by the millions, and we're the dummies. You go out to Los Angeles, you see ships, the biggest ships you've ever seen, loaded up with hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of cars, and they're docking one after another, and cars are just pouring off these ships, right? We pay, they pay almost no tax. And yet, with Nebraska, that sends beef, to Japan, I said, do you have to pay a tax? Yes, we pay a 38% tariff. 
98%. I never knew that. I never knew that. Now, that's on top of the fact that in terms of balance, the cars far outweigh. You know, the cars are up to the ceiling and what the beef is is down there. In other words, the, the balance is so off, right? I will take care of that situation so fast. In one day, that situation will be equalized. One day, okay? And we have many. China sends its stuff over, no tax. You want to do business with China? Number one, it's almost impossible. If you're a manufacturer, it's almost impossible to get your goods into China. If you get them and they don't want them, they're right. They want their own people to back up. <laughs> they don't want them. But if they get them in, if they get them in, you're going to pay a massive tax. A friend of mine did that recently. He had a deal, calls me up, didn't even, wasn't even thinking about me doing this. He said, boy, do I have a problem. This China is impossible. I can't get my stuff in. Finally, I get in there charging me this massive tax. But they send their stuff in. It's like, I'm telling you folks, we are being led by incompetent people. That's why we have a trade deficit. That's why we have a trade deficit of $505 billion a year. Okay, so here's the story. I love China. I have a lot of friends in China. The largest bank in the world is my tenant in one of my buildings in Manhattan. Their rent is good, believe me. This bank is so big. It's the largest in the world by far. I have them as a tenant. They like me, they respect me. I just renewed their lease. I said, are they gonna renew, really? You think, the way I talk about them, but they respect it. They actually respect it. China, I'm not angry at them. I sell condos to their people. I own the Bank of America building in San Francisco with a group. I own buildings in Manhattan. I got at war with China. That was war. It wasn't like we did a friendly deal. It was an unfriendly deal. I end up with a big chunk of the Bank of America building, one of the nicest buildings, one of the big buildings and nice buildings. I have nothing against China. I think they're great. I have nothing. I'm angry. I have nothing against Mexico. I love Mexico. I love the Mexican people. I have thousands of Hispanics that work for me. And I'm going to bring back thousands of jobs. And the Hispanics are smart. And they know I'm going to bring back. I love the Hispanics. I love them. But just so you understand, I have nothing against Mexican leadership. I'm angry at our leadership for not doing the same thing to these countries, okay? I don't blame China. I don't blame Japan. I don't blame Mexico. I don't blame Vietnam or India or any of these countries that do so well with us. I blame our corrupt and very stupid leadership, folks. All right? It's corrupt and it's stupid. So, so we're going to make the greatest trade deals that you've ever seen. We're going to get our jobs back. And you know what? Here's the funny thing. China doesn't like us. We've rebuilt China. China is the greatest theft. It's the greatest theft in the history of mankind, what they've done to this country. We have rebuilt China. They have trains that go 250 miles an hour. We have trains that go 40. Chug, chug. The Long Island Railroad. It's the same as it was. It's the same as it was when I was growing up on Long Island a long time ago. I won't tell you how long ago. It's too long. But listen, so we're going to be, we're like a third, we're like a debtor nation, which we are. We're going to be $21 trillion very soon. We're like a debtor nation, but we're like a third world nation. You look at our airports, our roads. You look at our highways, our bridges, our tunnels. They're dangerous. Our hospitals. But you take a look at other people. You go to Dubai and Qatar and these places, and you take a look at their airports. You go to China. You look at some of these airports. It's the most incredible thing you've ever seen. And then you land at LaGuardia, and they have potholes all over the place. Okay? We're going to rebuild. We've got to rebuild. We've got to restructure. We've got to do things that are going to be incredible for us. We have to fix our country. We've spent $4 trillion plus in the Middle East. And we're right now in much worse shape than if we never did anything. If we never did anything, if our presidents went to the beach for 365 days a year, we would right now be in better shape in the Middle East. Where we've gone is we've spent four trillion and we've regressed. Now we have the migration, we have ISIS, we have total instability. We have Iran is becoming this power, we've made them a power. And not only did they make a good deal with this idiot that we have, John Kerry, he's an idiot to make a deal like that. He never once walked from the negotiation. When they were standing and they were saying, we're walking, he would say, please don't walk. Okay? And you know, the Persians, the Iranians are great negotiators. The Persians are great. But never once, never once did John Kerry walk. 
He should have walked a lot. First of all, he should have never gone there unless we got our prisoners back first, okay? He should have said, you're not giving them back? Then you double up the sanctions and you'll have your prisoners back in 24 hours and that would have been years ago, not just recently, okay? So anyway, but he is grossly incompetent. He's grossly incompetent. He did not read the art of the deal that I can tell you, but he's grossly incompetent. And for Obama to allow it, when they're dancing in the streets all over Iran, I don't want people dancing when I'm making a deal. If I'm making a deal and I have people dancing, I'm going to say, let's take a look at this deal. I don't want to look foolish. They made us look so foolish. And that's why I ran, because we're going to have a strong country again. We're going to have a country, but they're not going to be dancing. You take a look at China. We've rebuilt China and they don't respect us. Look what they're doing in the South China Sea. They're building a military fortress in the ocean. Now, we couldn't do that because we'd want to get environmental impact statements, right? You know what they said? I have a lot of friends from China. I said, how long did it take you to get your environmental impact statements approved? I said that kidding. He said, you're kidding, right? I said, I am. He said, no. They agreed to do the deal on a Friday evening. Construction started on Monday morning, okay? To be honest with you, that's the way it should be, folks, okay? With us, we would go years and years and years. We're hurting a tadpole. We're hurting a certain kind of fish. You know what they're doing now? They have the biggest excavators you've ever seen. They're ripping the hell out of the ocean, and they're dumping it. By the way, it doesn't hurt the ocean. It doesn't hurt the ocean. You know how big the ocean is? So they're building this massive fortress in the South China Sea, and yet they take all our money. Do you know that we owe China $1.8 trillion right now. Think of it. They take our jobs, they take our money, they rebuild their country with our money, and we owe them 1.8 trillion. It's like a magic act in reverse, okay? We owe Japan, we owe Japan. They sell us all the cars. We owe Japan $1.5 trillion. So here's the story, folks. We're not gonna be the stupid people, the stupid country. You're gonna have the smart people now, and we're gonna have a country that you're gonna be proud of. Now, here's what you have to do. You have to go, remember the date. Remember the date, May 24th, but do it immediately, don't wait. Go home, you're gonna have it, hopefully, sitting in your mailbox, okay? Because you don't have to go. Send that thing in, because we want those votes. It doesn't take, you don't even have to go out and vote in your case. Most people at least have to go out. I don't know what the hell kind of a system you have here. You don't even have to leave your house. Check the back of the envelope and sign it. Do what you have to do. Don't just send it. But here's the story, folks. You're going to consider that vote, and you're going to consider the vote you make in November to be the most important vote you've ever made. Yeah. Ever made. And you're going to look back, and you're going to look back 20 years from now, two years from now, 40 years from now, maybe 50 for some of the young ones in the front. And you're going to say that was the greatest day because that's when we made America great again. That's when... That's when we started winning again. And we'll win. We're going to win with our military. We're going to knock the hell out of ISIS, by the way, folks. I'm sorry. We're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We'll win with our military. We're going to win for our vets. We're going to win with education, Common Core out, local. We're going to terminate. We're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. We're going to defend our Second Amendment 100%. They're chipping away. We're going to win on the borders. We're going to build the wall. Mexico's going to pay for the wall. And we're going to win with great, great trade deals. In other words, we're going to win, win, win. And you're going to love it. You are going to love it. Thank you very much, Washington. We love you. Thank you. Thank you.